do have something to talk about today. It's not like we don't have anything to talk about. We're here. We're going to discuss some things going on with Buzz, because Buzz is being weird for some reason. All right, we're going to get started. All right, so let's pry our eyeballs open. Do like on the cartoons when they put toothpicks or something just to hold your eyeballs open. Feel like one of those mornings. It's a rainy day. You just want to sleep when it's rainy. You know, it's it's early. It's rainy, but that's all right. We're gonna we're gonna forge on and uh, just survive in spite of the rain. So, all right, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on in Buzz this morning. Because Buzz is just being weird. So let's go to our class, uh, 0B right here. When I go to the grade screen, something's going on with Buzz, and it's not calculating grades correctly currently. It's just not. Uh, for some reason, it is not counting this quiz at all. It doesn't matter what you scored on, it's not counting it. And it is counting this review which was a practice grade. See, so if you look up here, fake student has a 76 out of 80. Well, let me sort this by grading categories. So here's EOLs, EOLs right here. And it says that he's got 60 out of 60 points. Well, look, he's got a zero on the quiz. He should have 60 out of 90 points. Shouldn't have a, a, a 95%. Well, it shouldn't have 100% in the U.S., but here's the thing. 76 out of 80, it's also counting this practice grade, and it knows it's a practice grade because it's sorted it down here. 16 out of 20. So it's taking this 20-point assignment, this 20-point, this 20-point, and the review, and that's how it's calculating fake students' grade in the class, and that's how it's calculating your grade in the class. It's using this practice assignment instead of this quiz. So... Please refer to the Home Access Center for your actual grade because this one is not going to be correct. See, if I go to the what if up here and I say, okay, what if I made 100 on this quiz instead of zero? When I recalculate, it doesn't change anything. It's totally ignoring that quiz. It doesn't matter if I got a zero or a 100, it's totally ignoring it. But if I go down here and say, what if I got a zero in this review assignment? Now it lowered my grade, and it shouldn't at all because that was a practice assignment. So I have contacted the website folks. They've got to help pick it in because they don't know what's wrong either. So Buzz is looking into it to try to figure out what's wrong with my grade book. But I'm just letting you know, do not pay attention to the Buzz grade. It is not accurate. So, all right, let's look at this week. If we look at, I'll go back to syllabus order so it has everything in order. Uh, this week, we have the end of the unit. We have the practice test followed by part one and part two of the module test. So let's look at that real quick. Go to activities. If you want to go do the test, here's the instructions. You can't even look at the instructions until you do the practice test. See, the practice test is first. You've got to successfully complete the practice test before you take the test. So looking at the practice test, first let's look at the review. The review right here will actually give you summaries of all the lessons. If you didn't take notes, if you didn't have all that down, you have another chance. Here's the end of lesson summaries for everything that we looked at up to this point. So lesson 1.01, that was the algebra review. Here's the things we covered in that lesson one. So you could print this off as your notes if you want. Keep it in a three-ring binder. Or you can copy notes off this page. But this page right here will have a review right in the equation of a line. So there's the three ways we did it. Standard, slope, intercept, and point slope. And it kind of gives some demonstrations below. So there is a review available for you right there. Then you go to the practice test. The practice test is much longer than the test. The test has... 14 total questions. There are 10 multiple choice questions, and then there's four that you have to type an answer. Four that you have to type an answer. And you have to show all of your work. So let's look at this real quick. Practice test. 
practice test should and it tells you if, you if you struggle and you get done with the practice test and you miss this one let's say this tells you it's from lesson 1.02 so you know which lesson to go back and look at if you couldn't figure out why you got this wrong but the practice test has what is this 29 questions 29 questions and you can take it as many times as you need to so let's see I'm going to look at the first one or two. Let's see. Given the equation 6x minus 1 equals 11, what's the order of operations that solves that? Well, at first you'd move the 1 over, then you divide by 6. So add 1, divide by 6. That would be what, how you solve that. Uh, one of these made an error. Let's see. Mm, added 4x to both sides. Get negative 25, you got 12x there. Let's see, subtract 8x from both sides. Uh, negative 12x, negative 25. Okay. So let's let's say that who made who made an error here? We're gonna just say Tommy made the error when she divided by 40. Well, Becky made there when she divided by 40. And then we'll go down here and let's say we say we do that and then we're going to do that. So I'm going to answer just a few of these. All right. And I'm going to, I must admit this just so we can look at the test. But this practice test, oh, I made a, I made a seven basically. The practice test is for you to go back and See how much you remember from the from these lessons. If you do poorly on the practice test, you're not ready to take the test. You need to go back and look at the practice test and say, oh, what did I miss? And do I know, did I just make a careless mistake or do I not know how to do something? So the way you review that, let's let's go to the grade book. And here's that practice test that I just now, I didn't answer very many questions. So if I click on that, Tells me I I made two out of twenty nine correct, which is the two we actually looked at at the beginning. Uh, if I put any feedback, it's right there. But look right here, you can click on questions and look at the questions. So when I look at the questions, I can see this one's correct. See a little check mark. This one was tr correct because Becky made error when she divided by forty. This one was wrong. I put the next, so it'll show me this is the answer I gave when I should have given this answer. So it will show you what's wrong. Oh, I gave this answer down here. It was actually the one right above it. So if I go back and look at this and can't figure out, I can go back to lesson 1.02 to see what that skill is. Uh, I missed something lesson two because I didn't know how to do this. Right? Uh, this one off lesson 1.02. So look at this practice test. See what you missed before you take the test. But after you take the practice test, then the test will open up. Here, let's go back and look at the test. Now, I just want to show you what the test looks like. Uh, part one, 10 multiple choice questions. One attempt. You got to, that's why you get the practice test. You could take a hundred times if you want to. The practice test doesn't care. It, it's a practice grade. And you can take as many times as you need to until you feel that you're ready for the test. All right. So here are the 10 questions. All right, so solve for F inverse of four. If you didn't remember the inverses, you need to go back and review that. There's some inverse questions. Use the graph to answer this. What's the average rate of change when X equals negative one to X equals two? What is the rate of change? It's linear, so the rate of change is the same everywhere. So, all right, so we have 10 questions. And the last one gives you a, a word problem and you have to pick which graph represents what this is saying all right so after you get finished with part one part two okay part two has four oh two questions oh that's right four questions in my other class algebra two algebra two has four questions you have two questions but you have to show all your work on this so let's look at the first one uh, and your your question may be different because there's a bank of questions it pulls from. But Juliana has created the function f of x equal 3x plus 2 divided by 4 to represent the cost of texting on her current plan. She does not have unlimited texting. Not everyone does. 
where X represents the number of texts. So Juliana discovers that using the inverse function, see the inverse function to solve for X over 30, she can predict how many texts she can use for 30 bucks. So you're supposed to explain to Juliana how to accomplish this using complete sentences. So that means you need to find the inverse function of f of x equal 3x plus 2 over 4. You have to find that inverse function. And then what do you do with that x equals 30? Using the inverse function to solve for x equals 30. So it says using complete sentences. Now here's what here's what Mr. Brock says. In mathematics, if I say uh, 3x plus Two equals four. That's actually a sentence. I'm sorry, divided by four. By divided by four. Anyway, this is a complete sentence. Right? We can write down how to solve it. Divided by four equals zero. See, if I just said that equals zero, I'm just, that's not how you solve this. That's not how you do the inverse, but I'm just saying. This is a complete sentence in math. That's a mathematical sentence. So you can show me the work, and that's as good as using complete sentences. You may need to add some complete sentences and say, uh, after finding the inverse, then, you know, you can do that. But I do want to show you something if you, if you don't remember or haven't used Buzz before. I wrote 3x plus 2 divided by 4 equals 4. That's this equation, but it doesn't look the same. If you're going to write an equation in Buzz, use this little button over here. There's a button that's a plus over minus with a check mark next to it. And it says insert equation. Use that. So if I go over here and type the exact same thing I typed over there, 3x plus 2 divided by 4 equals 0. Look how that looks. This is much more understandable than this. Use the insert equation button. Use the if I if I type something wrong, I can just click on this and it'll open this window and say, oh, that was supposed to be minus two. So I can just go back and, and edit things. But it was plus two. So use the insert equation when you're typing an equation in buzz. All right, so you have that question, which that's all wrong. So let's delete all that. Here's your second question. Use these four functions below for this question. And I need to go back and edit this to make that larger because you can't hardly even see that. You can kind of see it, but uh, compare and contrast these four functions. So here's a graph, an equation, a word problem, and a table. Focus on the slope and y-intercept and then any additional properties. To compare and contrast, if I'm going to compare and contrast the slopes of those, I need to say what the slopes are. Well, the slope of f of x is this. The slope of g of x is this. The slope of h of x is this. The slope of j x is this. As you can see, f of x and g of x are the same, or they're opposite, or, you know, they're not the same. Maybe g of x and f of x are not the same, but f of x and h of x are the same. However, you're comparing and contrasting. But to compare things, tell me what they are. And then the y-intercept, it, it if you don't have at least these two, you're, you're not going to get much points for this question. Because it tells you specifically, make sure you include the slope and the y-intercept. So list the four slopes, list the four y-intercepts, compare them. And then any additional properties. Maybe you can say, well, uh, f of x and j of x are negative slopes. g of x and h of x are positive slopes. So these are increasing, they're decreasing. Whatever else you want to add. Anything else that you see that you can add, but definitely have the slope and y-intercept. All right, so that's the part two, two open-ended questions that you have to show your work on. Yes, I know I haven't finished it, so I want to leave. So that's this week. You have the practice test and then parts one and two, and then we will be done with module one. So we are wrapping up and getting ready to move on. So. That's all I was going to tell you. If anyone wants to look back at anything and need help on anything we've covered, you know, let me know. We can do that. Otherwise, I'll let you guys go. Go have a nap before your next class. There's nothing new. It's just test week. So we'll see you guys. <laughs>